going to be services I could see already coming in for, for a fee or whatever to just guide you through the transaction to make sure you're asking the right questions to, to review your contract. They don't need to pay a 3% commission for a service like that. Come on, man. Come on. They're trying to go in all sorts of possibilities. You, you see, here's what it's like. It's like the car business here. If you want the car, where do you go? You go to the dealer who has the car. You don't yeah. go find a, a car rep to find you a car. Amazing, amazing. It's good for you, good for and the practice. seller. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in for another episode of our podcast. Today we're gonna to be doing a review of one of the videos that I saw a couple days ago. Uh, <clears throat> this is coming from one of the agents, coaches, uh, and uh, YouTube celebrity who I kind of follow and I know. And I listened to a lot of his advices in the beginning stage of my career. I listened to a lot of his advices. He's talking about how to become a listing agent. He's giving a lot of tips. This video is, uh, is talking about buyers, agents disappearing from the industry. <clears throat> and uh, if you're uh, in a real estate business, you know that there's a lawsuit that's going on right now yeah. that some sellers are arguing why do they have to pay a real estate commission to the buyer side, right? So this, this is where uh, they are talking over here in this video about buyer's agent disappearing. So right now, me and Joanna, Hello, we're, gonna, we're gonna look at this video and I'm gonna give you my opinion and we're gonna talk. Yep. And we're gonna see what we think about this. So let's go. Let's see. A world in the US real estate market without buyer's agents. Ooh. Now. Maybe that's dramatic. Maybe it isn't. Let me give well, let me tee this up a bit. Give the audience some context, and then we'll 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 start to get into it. Yeah. So, I think most people are aware. I hope of the two major class action lawsuits, lawsuits that are happening right, right now. Those set for trial that have to do with thousands of homeowners that are essentially suing like four or five of the major real estate franchises in our industry and NAR. Mm -hmm. And the argument that they're making is that they believe sellers should no longer be obligated to pay a buyer's agent if they bring a buyer to the house. Okay. So that's the, 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 the lay of the land. Now, it haven't used to be like that. Do you remember? Maybe, you know, maybe you don't, there was a sub agency. Like the, the buyer's agent works for the seller too. Mm -hmm. That used to be the case where like you no nobody works for the buyer. And then it changed like buyers are not represented. So now buyer's agents work for the buyer, but still the seller pays the buyer's agent. It used to be that mm -hmm. all both agents work for the seller, you know? In Europe it is separated. So that's interesting. The new yeah. perspective. We're gonna we're gonna talk more. This is this there's a lot of stuff that I want to cover, okay? You haven't seen this video. No, I haven't. I have. One Until time. Until recently, as, as um, recent as last week, even myself, I was like, there's, that's a, that's a, there's no chance that our industry can change. But two things happened last week that I think changes everything. That a new world, a, a new real estate industry, not only is it probable but some industry leaders think it's 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 absolutely going to happen like we should actually start to prepare and that's mm -hmm. what we'll talk about in today's episode so two two things happen I'll, I'll tee those up and then i want to talk about if these if this happens and this being the u.s real estate market transitions from how we do it right now with traditionally two agents involved Seller pays agent 6%, 5%. The agent splits that with another agent to bring a buyer. If, we, if, if that's a thing of the past and we start doing it like most of Europe, Australia, uh, uh, Russia, if we start doing it like all of these other countries do it, where there's just one agent involved, what, is that, what does the landscape look like? So here's what happened last week, all right? My biggest concern is the, let me pull this up and I'll share my screen. There's, there was a, there's all kinds of commission lawsuits on this. Um, can you guys see my, yep. how's that? There we go. All right. So on my screen right now, this just happened last week. 
There was a smaller commission lawsuit, and the MLS, it's called PIN, P-I-N, it settled. So this MLS said, okay, we, we agree to pay $3 million in damages and stop requiring sellers to offer buyer broker compensation in the MLS. Do you remember the post we had in our chat about that one of the MLSs will now uh, allow listing brokers to offer zero? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. So this is the same thing. There's mm -hmm. two MLSs now that allow listing brokers to offer zero to the buyer's brokers. Do you, you know? think that the changes are really coming up? I think, uh, like, it's not, <clears throat> it's not the, I mean, it, it still allows for mm -hmm. negotiations. Like, yes. it's going to be interesting to see how it's going to play out. The fact that they're going to allow zero as a buyer commission, mm -hmm. it, it's not going to, it's not going to, I don't think it's going to be a change, big change then. It, we have to see how it's going to play out. No, they're because making at this moment there was not much changes even with that being said that yeah. nobody offers zero still you can put anything you want mm -hmm. you yeah. can as a listing broker you can put a hundred dollars if you want right now you yeah. can put a one dollar you you still have that uh, option right now right you can yes. put a one dollar but that's not what we're seeing yeah you know maybe it's leading to a situation that we see in europe when the buyers have pay for their own agent and the sellers paid for do their they own have agents. the money do they have the money they have to put the down payment yeah, they have to pay true. closing cost and they still have to pay the broker yeah how and much on money the other you have to side have? seller says why do i have to pay for both yeah so, so that's what's let's see what that was one of the things that happened last week and wow. certainly, we'll talk about how that impacts the two major class action lawsuits in a second. And then here's the second thing that happened. Anybody that's been living under a bridge who doesn't know Stefan Swinepool. Um, I don't know he's, him. He's probably <laughs> the you know Stephen Swinepool? <laughs> most influential voice in the industry. So he, he consults everybody from Tom Ferry to Mike Ferry to NAR to Keller Williams to Remax to Colwell Banker. If they want any information... They, they, Stefan Swinepool is essentially the real estate coach for the real estate industry. So that's who we're talking about. He put out this letter last week to the real estate industry. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I'll put people to sleep. I just want to share a couple things. Here's what he said. He said, industry colleagues, the intense legal regulatory scrutiny on the residential real estate brokerage industry's predominant or uh, compensation structure in which buyer brokers receive compensation directly from listing brokers via the MLS, manda uh, mandatory essentially cooperation, has just hit a critical point. What he said was, a decoupling of buyer broker compensation from the listing broker compensation to some degree will most likely uh, happen. He goes on to say, not only is he saying it's most likely going to happen, but he gives three recommendations on what the industry should be doing right now as a result of it. He's saying NAR should immediately pass a mandatory rule to the MLS and the Code of Ethics. So they're saying update that immediately right now. Let's not even wait for the judge to, to rule on these. Let's just change it now. Crazy. This right here, number one, if NAR does this, the U.S. real estate industry is changing overnight. So he's saying that... The, those commissions should be decoupled. Listing side pays oh. by the seller, buy side nice. is paid by the buyer. He says that NAR should be immediately doing it. The second wow. thing he said, not only do we want NAR to make these changes. We this gets interesting when, when they start talking. So it's a little bit boring right now. We got, we're going through the data just to know what we're dealing with. but. It's going to get heated soon. We think brokerage, brokerages, every brokerage should, should make a change as well. Oh. And every agent should change all of their scripting, all of their marketing materials on how they service buyers and sellers. He's saying, prepare for this right now. Don't wait for a judge to rule on this and essentially you get caught with your pants down. So... That's the, that's the context that I want to talk about in, in the episode today. And essentially, if, if, if somebody's watching or listening to this and they're like, well, what would happen? What would, what would it result in? What would, what would happen essentially is commissions would get cut in half because 
if a buyer wants buyer representation, they would have to compensate their own buyer's agent. That's the big debate. That's a huge debate. I'll tell you from my own experience, and we'll talk about, you know, we've got some agents that we coach in other countries. We'll talk about how they see this going down. But for the vast majority of those countries, there are no buyer's agents because the buyers are simply just going to the listing agent. Right. So let me, let me stop there. Let me get your guys' thoughts on where we're at, and Let's then we'll, we'll kind of unpack it even deeper. Uh, go ahead, Ben. Well, I mean, you don't even have to go to another country. That's how the commercial industry has been doing it forever. True. Great point. So it's like... I- okay. Kind of, mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, I agree. Commercial industry has been like that. But in the commercial world, those people that are buying properties, commercial properties, they're more sophisticated. Yes. They're a little bit more into the game of investment. They know what they're doing. They've bought properties before. I'm not going to say that. They, they, what they're saying is that the buyer is going to go straight to the listing agent. A lot of times that happens. But for the listing agent, my opinion, it creates more work. More work. And who do they really represent at the end, right? I they mean, represent the, the seller. Whole, yes. So they the buyer the has seller. to be really aware of that. They're not going to be represented. They need to know what they're getting into. There's enough complaints about the buyer's agents already in the business and they're being represented. Most of the real estate agents that are representing buyers being buyer's agents, they really want to do a good job. Yes. They really want to protect their buyers and get their property, uh, the best uh, scenarios, the best properties, so they're, the they're, 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 mm-hmm. finally they're happy. But there's still a lot of complaints. And imagine that, that they disappear. And if all the buyers go straight to the listing agent. Listing agent's job is to sell the property. Yeah. And, and get the most work money. In the buyer's best interest. Yeah. What well, that's really interesting for me. Like I would like to discuss this with some European real estate um, agents, agents and yeah. ask how this works there. Yeah. Because I know some people who are buyers in Europe, and I spoke with them, and they did in mind actually. These people did in mind paying for their agent? buyer agent. Really? Yes. I know so, that in maybe, Ukraine, you know, I don't have a whole lot of information on this one, but it's kind of interesting how people would adjust or would they adjust yeah. here I if think there were any changes. In Ukraine, buyers pay both real estate commissions, Oh, okay. both sides. But I think if, you, if they have to pay both sides, especially not just one side, their agent, but both sides, the amount of transactions is going to be lower because mm-hmm. there's going to be less people who can afford doing that. Yep. Don't you think? Additional expense. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it's expensive. Like you have to come up with cash. That's cash. Yeah. Right now, I don't think that the mortgage company somehow is going to pay for that. It forever. True. Great point. Yeah. What else? So it's like I'm talking like, about I'm, commercial. I'm very familiar with that process. Just doing with a lot of small multifamily deals and whatnot. <clears throat> and it's 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 just interesting because maybe the um, commercial space, those types of buyers are so used to doing multiple transactions a year, maybe even more. um, And they just know, hey, all the information I need. Compare the first time home buyer and the guy who's buying his... Who knows each, you know. (laughs) Yeah, what's the number of his... For many years, investor, yeah. yeah. Like, I I would go straight to a listing. I feel comfortable, no problem. I'll negotiate with you. Yeah, but the first time home buyer coming into a buying their first house, and I mean, you got to be sophisticated. Money might be an issue and also yeah. understanding the whole process. Yeah, and they're, they're talking over here like it's, yeah, yeah, of course. It's coming from the listing agent. I'm familiar with the process. So either I'm going to go unrepresent it or, and just use the listing agent, or they do bring the buyer's agent because they found the deal or whatnot, but that buyer agent knows, hey, I got to build my fee on top, right? Yeah. So obviously in residential, typically somebody doesn't sell except once a decade. When he's mm-hmm. talking about building a fee on top, I might see that happening where the list side, the seller side says, okay, the price is 450. You have the agent, make it 460. Yes. And then we'll pay your agent. Okay, now still the buyer understands that they are paying for their broker, but they're paying that through the mortgage. Yeah. Maybe, right? 
So then they had, don't have to come pocket. up with the pocket money. Yeah. But then every single buy, every time the buyers understand that that is priced because we have the broker. Is the broker now valuable so much? Because now there's a notion that it's going on out there that using the buyer broker is for free, which is not. That is not. It's Somebody not. pays for that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the seller. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean also that if you go without the broker, that the price is going to be cheaper. Mm -hmm. It's also not going to be cheaper. Right now, it's going to be different. It's going to be this price is 450, for example. And if you have your broker, we have to build it up into the price. So then we have the money to pay. That's going to be interesting. In that case, I can see that. I can see that happening. And the buyer is like, okay, that's fine. I'll pay uh, in the mortgage. That's mm -hmm. going to come from the mortgage. If it's going to appraise. What if it's not going to appraise? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So being represented, I mean, as, as we think it, it is important, right? So how do you see that going with, uh, I mean, dual agency is a big conversation and essentially that could be what we're seeing a lot. How, how do you navigate that? So a couple things, Let, yeah, I guess we'll deal with this with one, one issue at a time. Sure. Um, we'll, we'll deal with that one first. The, that's that's the debate is what is the true value of a buyer's agent now i think that the industry would broad brush that do you believe that there's a value in buying an agent i do yeah do you 100 of course 100 percent. there's there's moments where i see myself asking questions that opens up the mind creates thoughts they start talking and it makes sense or sometimes there's like i'm not sure i'm on the fence and i can either help them walk away or make him buy and they're happy at the end i see that the good buyer's agent is valuable but you can only say that and, and experience that after so there's a lot of like my broker was bad my broker was good but you don't know what's the alternative because there's only one way to do it is like you go through it and then you know and there's no way to redo it yes only if you're buying another property with somebody else or yes and even if there is a not necessarily first time buyer by a buyer who did bought in the past yeah they still are not in the market the way we are every day we know what's going on we know what's happening yes. we know what we need to say how to get them best terms they don't questions to changing. ask to the other side absolutely and also you know contracts are changing things are changing yes. we are on the top of everything and just explaining to them like i was speaking with somebody the other day and they were buying uh in the past a few times and they didn't fully understood as is and it's important to understand those things because yeah. that just helps you make also, decisions also know knowing lenders this yes. lender can do this this lender can do that Absolutely. this complex is not Fannie Mae approved so only portfolio mm -hmm. or commercial will go through and a lot of even brokers don't know these things. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, the good agent is extremely valuable. But a lot of people might not know this, you know? And of course, like if you look at the back, like uh, before the internet came out, a lot of people thought that it, uh, real estate agents are gone because yes, we kept the MLS. Mm -hmm. And also when I just got into the business, I start seeing a lot of flat fee companies listing homes for a hundred bucks. And I thought the agent is gone. I didn't know the value that of the agent happen. in the beginning. Didn't happen. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, companies that will do the i buying. They will offer a buying a house and then re relist. That could be like a big uh, shift, but that still didn't happen. It's like a lot of things are being thrown at the industry. And buyers brokers are still there and needed. And listing agents as well. Yes, it's like yes, it's yes. it's like it's it's still a people's business and you know it's it's those mm -hmm. who know how to work with people and how to navigate and make it a uh, less stressful experience and more pleasant and help with bringing more logic because it's very emotional. Try to buy, like I'm I'm buying my house last year. I was going through a roller coaster on emotions. Uh, I'm buying a six flat right now. I'm going through a roller coaster of emotions. It's just, and I'm doing it every day. <laughs> and I'm the guy who's supposed to be chill. <laughs> yeah, you know, like first time home buyer or seller. And try to position uh, or, or try to politic their way and to say, well, buyer's agents bring a lot of value to the table. That's a broad brush. 
Some do. Most don't. That'd be my argument. Some do. Yeah. A very small percentage of... I wouldn't say some. I wouldn't say small percentage. A lot of Asians are doing a good job, you know? Them do. But the vast majority of the weekend warriors, you know, the one that's a full-time teacher and is a realtor in the weekends, like during the summertime, I mean, they're just opening doors. Yeah. Hey, do you guys like it? I can write an offer. I mean, that, that's to the extent of the service. Of course, <laughs> there, there's a lot of those who just open doors and they are not uh, professionals. I wouldn't say there's most of, I mean, I don't know. I don't know the statistics, but not in our, not in our for sure, <laughs> you know, we're, I, I think honestly, people are going to be mad. I, I just think this would wipe out 30, 40% of, of the, the agents. That's what I believe would happen. <laughs> maybe, maybe even more. Maybe even more. Because Funny. How, it hap how it works in other countries is it's super rare for the consumer to go and hire an agent, pay them, when really all they want access is, to is the product. The product is the listing. Right. And it's right. the listing agent who represents the product. You, you see, right. here's what it's like. This is the best analogy. And then Colton, jump in. It's like the car business here. If you want the car, where do you go? You go to the dealer who has the car. You don't yeah. go find... This actually makes sense. You know, when you when you need a car, you, you, start, you shop your, by your, on your own. You shop mm -hmm. on your own and you go straight to the dealer. You don't bring a car person with you to negotiate. It, but there is a whole lot of different aspects. So. Yes, like <laughs> car experience. I mean, you know, <clears throat> it's not as big of a deal yes. as the... Would you agree? A, a car rep to find you a car, you go to the dealership who has the product. That's the way I see this happening. But if you rewind, that's the way it used to be with brokers, right? There wasn't the internet. You had to get right. the yeah. buyer's agent to give you access to all the listings. Yeah, well, but that's, that, that's, but, that, that's, that's, that's... And it's interesting. It was like that. You go to the agent to get access to the listings. Now you have access to the listings, but people still go to the agent. Mm -hmm. It's like they don't have to. You really, you can go straight to the listing agent. And a lot of listing agents would say, do you have an agent? Why wouldn't you get one? You know, mm -hmm. and there's a lot about showing properties too that we're gonna, they're gonna talk about and I have my- That's go what ahead. I was gonna say. It's like buyers, you know, an, an agent's, a buyer's agent's value prop, you know, now is like, hey, we're gonna find you the right home in the right, like, Buyers have been doing that for 10 years now yeah. with Zillow. Like they know how to shop for homes. They know how to use Zillow. And they they do. use Redfin and they still come. They do. To they, a lot of times they find their house. And they send it to their agent. But try to it. get the house on your own right mm -hmm. now with multiple offer situations right now. Even but if you have access to the listing agent, a listing agent is going to be the one you're talking to. First of all, it's hard to get to the listing agent. If you get to there, you're already happy uh, and lucky. But uh, going, you're competing against professionals mm -hmm. that know how to submit offers, know how what to negotiate, they know what to say, you know. And then you're on your own trying to. What do I need to do to get the house? I don't Absolutely. know. Absolutely, in such a competitive market as it is today, especially. Yeah. I have buyers who are reaching out to me with some listings that they found on Zillow, right? Yeah. You know some places and there were always so many additional informations that I was able to give them about the property that they didn't have and they couldn't find on their own prior to them seeing it. What's the so, special assessment? What could that be for? What's the can master? I rent? Can it be rented? Yeah, oh, yeah it can it, be rented after two after years of um, you know owner occupied and approval of the board and like oh, lots of lots of different does things. The, does the seller side has any interest in letting you everything know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, like, uh, I was showing some property, and before we went there, I was like, guys, there's multi, multiple offer situation. Like, there's this, this, this. This is what's sold, and gives them completely Example, different. Example, yesterday, our, uh, one of my clients calls me, hey, there's a uh, thing, I want to buy it, uh, but we want to buy it as owner-occupant. Um, I'm looking it up. Reserves, no money in mm -hmm. reserves. You yeah. got to go commercial 25% down. They would, not, they would not know how to do this unless mm -hmm. I told them, because I went through it, I know these things. So they would have gone, they would like the property, they would try to put it on the contract, they would go through the mortgage, they would pay appraisal, they would pay inspection, they would pay earnest money deposit, and then a so, uh, bank would have done the searches and see that there's no money in reserves, and they say that we need to do 25% down. What happens? I need to cancel. Yeah. 
what happens if in the complex, um, uh, condo complex, let's say one and ten, and he holds 50 units? Right, yeah. So that's, you cannot only buy it for only, <coughs> you cannot buy it as an investment. You can only buy it as an owner-occupant, and it also requires more down payment. And what happens if you want to resell it in the future? Yeah, this is all those things you need that to, know these things. to know, and you yeah. don't even know buyers often you don't, don't even know, even know what to, know ask. to ask. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. That's yes, right. Exactly. Does that mean double the paperwork for the listing agent then? It means uh, for a listing agent, if if for example the buyer goes straight to a listing agent, that means that listing agent doesn't have to say these things. I'm no, like, I need to like sell the property. Buyers, they don't know what to, they don't know. That's why they need somebody who can help them and guide them through. What needs to be checked? What questions yeah. need to Sometimes be asked? What questions need to be asked in attorney review? What are going to be your that. taxes? Do you know how to check taxes? What are going to be in the future? No. Before you even go on the... Of mm -hmm. course, attorneys can do that. Somebody's going to say, attorneys will do it. Of course, they'll do it. But that's after. And what if your earnest money deposit is lost? Then you're going to know a lot of cases where earnest money deposits are lost and then there actually is a value in the buyer's broker. Wouldn't you rather know some information before you put an offer, before you pay for inspection, before you go through all this? And process? then there's going to be before articles. There's like too much complaints, too many money is lost. Let's go back to hiring buyer brokers, you know? I mean, I'm sure that there's people that are hiring brokers that are part-time and not competent and not professional, and they just want to get a deal done and get a commission just that's for hanging a in a deal. Uh, that's not so, a good approach. But yeah, and then there's a lot of also uh, complaints about their agents in the industry too. Um, but in order to succeed in this business, realtors know that it's about relationships. So you want to do the best for your clients so they're happy, so they refer and repeat and come back to you and, and you know. The and commission check should not be uh, the first thing on your mind. Yes. It should be definitely the last. Yes. Wouldn't we agree? It, yes. It's a client's interest that goes first. First. And uh, yeah, but let's keep watching. Put it that the politics side of, oh, well, you're, you know, they're going to represent you and make sure you don't make any bad decisions and this and that. There's going to be services I could see already coming in for, for a fee or whatever to just guide you through the transaction to make sure you're asking the right questions to, to review your contract. They don't need to pay a 3% commission for a service like that. And that, that's going to allow a Zillow. To, to come in and offer something like that to buyers. 100%. Buyer concierge. Yeah. yeah an attorney. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, or an attorney. I mean, that's what people... What do you think about that? The <laughs> service, the AI service is going to guide you through the transaction. Hmm. Yes, of course. What do I do next after a uh, contract is signed? You do uh, three steps. And of how course, many but people every are going to feel deal, even comfortable with this? Every single deal is so different. It's just, it's Absolutely. just, that's why real estate is local. Because a lot of agents, they know the complexes. They know these streets. They know this. They know that. You know, you know, you know the backyard. You know the, you know, the parks. Mm -hmm. You know the schools. You know everything. So I cannot see that. It's really hard for me to imagine. I don't, and how people would feel comfortable with this? Like I don't know. I have no idea how the AI is going to work. But if it does, then it's a next level. I'm, I don't see that yet. To make sure you're asking the right questions to, to review your contract. They don't... Buying Mazda or buying Toyota Camry you know what the Toyota Camry is. They all the same. There's different there seats. There's checkpoints, right? There's right. different color and different trims. You know what it is. Buying houses, buying condos, townhouses, they all different. Different finishes, different locations, Not different taxes, different houses, situations, yes. different debts, different liens, different owners. Everything's different. Come on, man. You, your contract. They don't need to pay a 3% commission for a service like that. And that, that's going to allow a Zillow to, to come in and offer something like that to buyers. 100%. Buyer concierge. Yeah. yeah an attorney. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Come on. Buy concierge and attorney. Of course. Attorney will start digging in after you already deposited and spend a lot of money and went to the bank. That's when attorney starts Clicking They're in. trying to go in all sorts of possibilities. Of also. course, of course. Every, you can buy property without the agent, of course. But the vast majority, again, I agree with some stuff. Th th some changes are coming, yes. but not 
maybe, I don't know, to that degree or that fast. It's the same talk as uh, MLS, internet is a removing agent. Well, do in every other country. It's just like, yeah, and the the commercial and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, man, I just lost my train of thought. But the, the, I just think that most, th- this plays well for agents that have been focused on being a listing agent. And that's why at first I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. But the, the, the longer this has been going on, the more I've been thinking about this, the more agents I've been talking to in other countries, if it happens, I'm actually pretty excited. And, and here's why, okay? So I'm excited because it's what we do. We believe in agents building a listing business. And not because uh, just that, but here's for the agent. Check this out. Going, oh, going back to the whole dealership thing. If an agent- My opinion, if, if it plays out the way they say it's gonna play out, that the buyers are going straight to the listing agent, this creates more work for a listing agent. Explaining the buyers what they need to do, telling them how to write an offer, and sometimes you will have to write an offer for them and send mm-hmm. them for the signatures and ask them what they want to do on the offer. Well, a lot of times, that my that's what I asked. That's more work on the listing. On the listing agent, that's too much. That's mm-hmm. more work. So and more liabilities. I, of course, uh, there's more paperwork to sign. You have to show them that it's, they're going to be unrepresented, or you're going to be representing both sides, which sellers need to agree that buyer need to agree signing dual agency, and. Um, they listing agents. If I am managing now both sides, I need to have more get compensated fee. for that. Yeah, I get to get three to and a half, four percent, or full five percent. So what is that saving for the seller? Same five percent at the end. Or you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do double of work for the same fee. You know, if there's no other agent, I want to do more. Give me more fee because I'm now managing the other side. Now I have to do uh, tell them what they need to do. Now they're asking for attorney. I have to refer them to the attorney. Now I have to give them the lender. They probably need to go through pre approval still. Even if they I'm managing now attorney. both sides. Well, in, well, that's in a perfect world too, right? That they come, they know what they want. They they can wait. Yeah. But what about like the super emotional buyer that is going to keep you on the phone or going to call you every two and a half hours asking a brand new question? Oh, I forgot to ask this. I forgot to ask this. That's can right. Go there now. Can I do this now? That's right. Why aren't this there? There why will be that? so many. Yeah. Well, why is the seller selling? Can you tell me how much they need to make? To make? I know that, but I can't tell you that because I'm working. What if you're a dual agent? I'm like, I, I, I don't know what I to answer. I cannot say no nothing. I cannot <laughs> not say nothing. But you're not really working for me. I know I'm not working for you because <laughs> I'm working for them. So mm-hmm. you're dual. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm nowhere. <laughs> You know, like I, you gotta be, you gotta give them non-representation. So, for example, I'm not working for you; I'm working only for the seller. But can I ask you this? So, can I ask you that? Can I ask you millions of other questions? Yeah, more work. They're saying that that's how it's going to play out. We'll see. Not because uh, just that, but here's for the agent. Check this out. Going, oh, going back to the whole dealership thing. If an agent gets a listing in a world where there are no buyers' agents, think about this. All the buyers come to you. And those buyers have houses to sell. All the buyers come to you. Just, just get ready. Just get ready for all the buyers come to you. That's, that's more work. That is more commission for, okay, I'm the listing agent. I'm charging, you're going to be making more money. If this is how it's going to play out, you're just going to be making more money. Sellers will be paying more uh, to the listing side. Let's say there's no buyer's agent. Buyers are coming in. They don't know how to buy. They don't want the brokers, uh, don't want to pay for brokers. They're coming in, um, they're buying lemons. They don't know what they're mm-hmm. buying. They don't know the questions to ask. They're just getting a house, uh, not being represented. The agent, listing agents get paid more. Um, I think it's a mess. My opinion is that it's not going to last for too long. There's going to be still going back to, we had representation. This was the happy place. Sellers pay through the transaction. It comes from proceeds. The price is, my opinion is this, the price today is where it is because of the mortgages and because the commission is built into the price. So it comes off of the proceeds because the market has been appreciating. Buyers broker are helping the market to go. They're also promoting home ownership. They're bringing in buyers into the market. 
same as listing agents. Brokers are, are needed because they're making more transactions happen. That's why prices keep growing and, and sellers pay commissions through the proceeds, through the price. Bro brokers disappear, prices come down, less transactions, less money to the seller. My opinion. You agree? Yeah. Hey. I like I like when there's two agents because there's no confrontation. I like when there's agents involved because there's no seller buy confrontation. A lot of a times. A little buffer, right? A lot, yeah, it's a buffer. It's a lot of times buyers could be. Um, what, what's the word you use? Um, um, unreasonable. Mm -hmm. Sellers could be unreasonable, and sometimes why are they asking Seller us to feel fix offended the with some things? And, and the agent's gonna say, I mean, they're just trying, it's typical, you know, it's normal. Let's just say we're not gonna do that, or whatever you wanna say. You, you calming the, the imagine them hitting, you know, um, each other head to head, falls apart just because of egos and emotions. Yeah, you don't have, have to deal with that myself, though. So we interviewed one of the agents that we coach, right, from Australia. And he's like, every house I, I list, I get 20, 30, 40 people through an open house. And half <laughs> those people have houses to sell. So now you have a true flywheel business that every listing you get, there is no more buyer's agents. I mean, okay, there's an argument that says, yeah, maybe some agent, maybe some buyers somehow are, are going to justify, yeah, I'm going to pay my agent $15,000 to show me this house. I just don't, I'm not totally sold on that yet. Most of the buyers are gonna go dr I think he never worked with a buyer and I think he's very pro listing and seller. I don't know, maybe he did work with buyers. I think he's out of production right now, but I think he's not seeing the buy side mm -hmm. um, deep enough. Directly to the source. It's happening right now. So that's what leads me to believe that it will absolutely happen, right? Mm -hmm. Most buyers are going right to the listing agent now. So when you have the product, just like a, a car, the buyer, the consumers goes right to the property. And if that person, as you're having these conversations, it's a world when, with, with, as it relates to lead generation where agents get exactly what they want, which is prospects coming to them. What a what a what a an amazing world. So your guys' thoughts on that first point, and there's a bunch of other upsides I I, I see if this thing goes down. What what the first thing I just I was gonna ask your guys' opinion on, but I think it almost answered itself, but still I'll ask is how this changes, you know, like Zillow's model, right? Because yeah. there's no more buyers agents, but now <laughs> is it gonna be the listing agent that has maybe they're gonna gate the listing agent has to That's interesting when he's mm -hmm. picking up like Zillow are make, is making money by selling buyer leads. Like if there's no buyer agents anymore, like how is Zillow going to Yeah. Like how is Zillow going to make money? To pay for those leads. I'm curious, what do you guys think on on that? Um yeah, I mean I I you know, like I think their model has to change. Mhm. Mm you know, if, if there's no buyer agent commissions, when I that was just and that in that case, they're just gonna s charge listing agents to promote listings. I say no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't do what I said at the beginning of the show. I won't broad brush it. But if let's just say buyer agent commissions are like the anomaly, like they happen sometimes, but like ninety percent of the time, there's no buyer's agent in, in the deal. Yeah, I yeah, think I, the, I think it's gonna be vice versa. It's gonna be most of the time. It's still gonna happen. The buyer brokers build there, but. Maybe a little, more, a little bit more than now, there's going to be no brokers. Yeah. Realtor.coms and the Zillows of the world, they, they go to a model where now it's a true marketing game. The, the, world, the days mm -hmm. of, a, of a listing agent just throwing it in the MLS and sitting back and letting it do its thing, because that's the other thing. So now look at the listing agent's job now. Is he saying throwing it in the MLS and having brokers sell it? disappearing now you have to really start marketing it a lot because uh you know you need to get on top of the all the ser uh, search Searches. websites so then now you need to do more marketing and manage more buyers i'm charging more money the listing agent has to bring more to the table too from a marketing yeah. perspective you can't just rely on buyers agents selling your property right this is a That's true right. game of, of marketing of positioning of creating a world where your listings are standing out from from all the other listings and you are selling your own listing well, to be fair that's what the consumers think is happening now yeah right right i mean the consumer hires a listing agent 
And they believe in their hearts of hearts that the listing agent is selling the property. It's just super rare. That's coming up in these lawsuits too, to be fair. So Mm -hmm. this does put that direct value proposition from listing agent to consumer, which is the way I think it ought to be, by the way, where seller hires you, Colton, to sell my house and Colton, you sell my house. Mm -hmm. You brought the offers. You, you presented all the offers. You found the buyer. There's not this other middleman involved. Yeah. So, and, and I think I think it makes the trend. Although, like the debate of dual agency comes up, having one agent involved makes the transaction so much smoother. We've all been in in those transactions, and it's just like there's one agent. Uh, it's smoother for who? Yeah, not necessarily. The buyer is not represented. Mm-hmm. The buyer needs to be protected. The contract even protects buyer more than the mm-hmm. seller. If you look at our contract, it's more for the buyer, um, my opinion. And it, the way it's written, the, all the contingencies, the, all the terms, everything is like for you to be able to pull out. The I more, think that those things will be also written, things here added and everything. Uh, you know, still, adjusting to still whatever. this everything is about the public protecting mm-hmm. the public yeah we need to make sure that every time somebody buys the house it's not going to fall apart there's going to be no that's why there's permits no surprises later that's why on after villages do pur- inspections that's why they don't want you to do anything sell it and then the person is having fire or something like that everything is about protecting the public who is going to protect the public right here like who's going to be represent the buyer Easier transaction for who? For Dual the seller? agency, easier transaction for whom? Exactly. For the agent. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's, it's um, yeah. two against three. <laughs> There's one agent, right? Experienced agent in this case, most likely, dealing with two people that might be emotional. Now you don't have a third party that's also emotional. And it tends to be that, you know, my experience, not always, but an agent that doesn't have as much experience can also get emotion. So you play the game of telephone and you just don't always get the real picture. 100% spot on. That was one thing that um, Nicholas, our agent that, we, that, that works in Australia, that was one of the biggest upsides that he said when I interviewed him. He said, well, these transactions go, he's like, I couldn't even imagine a world having to deal with another realtor and then they got to talk to their buyer and then they got to wait. Like it just, <laughs> they all go so smooth. You're the one yeah. talking to the buyer. Yeah. You're talking to the buyer. Hey, here's what you need to do to get this property. It is not dual agency. That's it. Colton, you brought that up. Ben, you brought that up. That's not what we're talking about. Dual you agency would be gone. represent the seller. That's and, it. And you're just communicating with the buyer. Correct. Amazing. Amazing. It's good for you. Good for and the seller. practice in reality. <laughs> you represent the seller. You just communicate it to the buyer. The buyer and Don't you see any no, issues no in issues, it? Right? No. no problem. No problem. Correct. Yep. Right. Exactly. It's, again, I go back to the dealership. The okay. dealership, the dealership is protecting dealership. their margin. You want this car. Okay. I'm negotiating with you. They don't see no problems. They have to leave that dealership out of this conversation. Yeah, no, I, I get the dealership. I kind of thought about it for a little bit too. Kind of like, okay, makes sense here, makes sense there. But I'm okay buying how uh, buying a car not represented too. Like, it's fine. I know what I'm buying. This is the car. This is what I'm buying. It's new. Oh, when it's used, it's another thing. There's a, mm-hmm. at least there's a, the car uh, facts thing uh, that you can kind of learn a little bit about it. Usually, cars also don't cost as you, much as houses. <laughs> usually, yeah, <laughs> unless you're buying Bentley or something like that. But uh, I mean, if you're buying Bentley, you're already kind of sophisticated you know, too. So you, you kinda, can afford to buy his broker. You, you in that case, <laughs> you have to worry. That's right. Yeah, but um, you know, like. It's uh, there's no issues in their in their world, you know. Like buyers are just being communicated. They need to come and really like put their hands in work and just see how it is in the. Do they sell? In the real world. <laughs> but I'm I represent this vehicle, right? Yeah. In this case, yeah. we we represent the house. So if you want this house, I'm negotiating with you, the buyer. Hey, here's what you need to do to, in order to get this house. You know, like, and now you're writing the offer. You're having the conversation. You're talking to the buyer's lender. You know their qualification. You're looking at their financing. You're looking at their, their approval. You're looking at their inspection. You're looking at the appraisal. I mean, you, you control the entire process truly as a listing agent, which is the way that should be. That's what's best for the seller. You have a lot more control in the process. That's another upside. Cool. And you want to add something it, to that? It, yeah, it makes sense that the person with... It's good best for the seller. Where's the buyer? 
the product is the one who gets paid. You know, that's, not it just that's right. Yeah, it sounds so obvious, but like when it has never it hasn't been that way for so long, and so, we're so used to it. It's like, yeah, could you imagine having having a concierge come to a car dealership trying to get a spiff off of the car? Like never. Uh, no. no. No other yeah, industries work that way. No. No, so, unless, unless you go straight to the person and you more of like you, you're hunting for a product for somebody, right? Yeah. That, but I think listing agents will take that role too. Okay, you didn't win this house. I had three offers. Hey, I might have another one coming up or I know somebody that might be willing to sell. And then you just are, you represent them in finding it, but then represent that seller. And well, here's the other thing. It. This goes back to the argument of like, I often talk to agents when they're trying to convert a for sale by owner. Mm-hmm. The, the for sale by owner has this twisted too. Check this out. Mm-hmm. The for sale by owner thinks this is how it works. They think that buyer Bob goes and seeks out realtor Ben and says, Ben, can you find me a home for sale? Which is not what's happening. Yeah. It's the best example ever. Buyers, buyers, how, how do I say this? We find buyers through listings because. Okay. He thinks that we find buyers through listings. That's, that he's talking about get, buying leads. So if you buy leads, they register on listings. That's how you, mm-hmm. my buyers come through calling me. Like, for example, you probably get buyers. Oh, yeah. They call yeah. you, Joanna, we're mm-hmm. looking for a house. Can we start looking? Yeah. And that's when the whole process starts. Yes. Would you say that could Absolutely. be? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. They come from listings when they come to open house and when they register on a website. But it's not the hundred percent of the business that the that the buyers agent. That's how the buyers are coming to agents. A lot of times they're just reaching out. Look, we thought about buying. We're renting right now. We're thinking about buying. Have you started looking at anything? No, not yet. We don't know what area. Go to the lender. Blah blah blah. And that's when the whole process starts. Yes. That's even before they, talk, they even look at any homes. Yeah, they talk to their friends, and friends recommend this broker. They just then they yeah. call you and. In their world, they're registered on a website or coming to the open mm-hmm. house. That's how. Because buyers go, that's how buyers are, are coming about. Mm. Buyers don't go to realtor first, say, can you find me something? No, they just go around, in my experience. Yeah, he's saying that you, they don't come to a realtor. We, we see that differently. I see it differently. Oh, they just go to the internet, search homes for sale. Any buyers out there or any real estate agents out there, they're watching this. If you watch until this moment, you made it as far, that far <laughs> to the video. Comment below and let us know if you're the buyer, how you found your real estate agent, and if you're a real estate agent, how your buyers find oh, you. Yeah, that's, that's a good, good question, yeah. yeah. City and state, and blah, they have more information than most, most realtors. They don't need the realtor to, okay. Colton, you said it, they don't need them to find anything. They don't need them to find anything, for sure. There's private market, there's open market. You can find a property on your own, of course. Argument, they come I for agree. Guidance. So my argument always with, with agents that I'm coaching that are trying to convert a for sale by owner, the for sale by owner thinks it's still the 80s, that the, the, these buyers are walking into some office saying, hey, can you guys find me out? No. Buyers go to the product. Buyers, right. buyers uh, identify themselves by the listing. That's how you find out about a buyer is through the listing, a.k.a. Zillow, billion dollar business. Yep. That's what's happening, people. I don't see anybody that can debate that. I would love to debate that because buyers... Do you buyers, think this would put them out of business? No, because I think what would happen is exactly what Colton said. I think... We sign just, me up. Just sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they call buyers, do you think this would agents. put them out of business? No, because I think what would happen is exactly what Colton said. I think that all they do is go to you, Ben, and say, if you want your listings on Zillow, you want more buyers to your, your, for your seller... You got to pay now to, to put your, your properties on but, Zillow. But why? Because I'm putting it on the MLS. They can publicly access that. No, but, right? but if you want the leads and the inquiries from right. that. But I do the open house. I do this. I do that. Like I, It'll be interesting. I don't know. Because what I, blows my mind about Zillow is we pay all this money to be a realtor, to have access to the MLS, all this stuff. And then we just give it to Zillow. Yeah. yeah. And then they sell it for the, for the buyer. Well, that's a whole nother topic. That's buying leads. 
That's um, how they yeah, we give up all the oh. information, all the data. Zillow then resells it back to us, which is, I mean, they make money. I interviewed one of the executives of Realtor.com a year ago. She was there when they made these agreements, when the MLS gave our data away to these uh, yeah. IDX, the, these syndicates. There's a whole story on that. Look, maybe we'll talk about that in another episode and right, why they did it. And I'm all over the place. This is a wild topic. Yeah, it's a wild topic because if that were to happen, the other argument that I made in a YouTube video I made about this topic is maybe we get the market share back to your point. Maybe mm -hmm. we get control, Ben, back with our listings where it's like, Zillow, I don't need you no more. You know what I mean? It's like, I've got the product, you know? Right. So I don't know. That's an interesting, I haven't spent any time thinking about it. Yeah. And I'm curious too, I don't know if you had another topic, but how, how this is going to affect for sale by owners, because on one hand, the right, most, most of them, the majority of them are more than willing to pay that 3% commission, right? So I wonder if on one hand they'll say, yeah, there's, we'll just work with an agent because it's only 3% now, or if it's like, hey, because they're, they're still in the mindset of like the agents, the buyer's agent is bringing it. So now they're like, now I really don't need an agent because none of the buyers have agents anymore. No, I think and it's the I opposite. Had buyers, how... And I had buyers uh, that I connected um, with for sale by owners. Yeah, people you brought still, the buyers. People still come to you because yeah. they come for guidance. They come yeah. for lots I of... I think we're on the same page with that. Uh, what he's saying is that for sale by owner, those who want to sell on their own, if there is no buyer's agent, then mm -hmm. they for sure are not going to go nowhere because they're saying that well, buyers don't have agents, so they can just mm -hmm. come to me um, on one hand. On the other hand... If I list, I'm going to be everywhere, so then more buyers come. It's still, I mean, for sale by owners, just trying to save money. They want to sell and no pay, yeah. don't pay the commission. So if there's opportunity to not pay and sell, there's always going to, they always going to, they have a different mindset of uh, how this business is playing. They don't believe in the value of the listing agent. We're here talking about the value of the buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. So there's, like you sit across the table from the buyer, from a for sale by owner, you're gonna hear them um, saying things that listing agents they don't they have no value. These three guys are gonna scream that listing agents have a lot of value, a lot of value <clears throat> which yeah. I'm gonna agree too. And I think the buyers agents also bring a lot of value. That's why they are in the market. Always oh, one time I heard this phrase: market eliminates unnecessary. So if the market, for, for example, if the price of the product is too high, competitors show up and the price of the product starts dropping, the margin starts slimming. If something is, can be done without that service, the market will eliminate the service. So if that service is, is, is around for many, many years, it's needed, it's what the market is telling, that this service is needed. It's improving the whole experience. So always market always eliminates unnecessary businesses and uh, services. It's not as big of a number. It's not as daunting. Well, commission number. Well, most will pay three percent to a buyer's agent and not have representation. But what, so, I'm, but what I'm but what I'm saying, and I agree with that because mm -hmm. most of them are like, hey, I'm already I'll, I'm willing to pay three percent. So now let's say this shift happens, they're like, hey, I'll just work with an agent for three percent, but. Most of them are willing to pay that 3% because they think the buyer's agent is bringing them the buyer. Mm -hmm. So now with no buyer's agents involved, do they think, oh, now I really don't need an agent because all, all of the buyers are going to be coming directly to me with the way that this is now going. Potentially, potentially. Yeah. But the thing is now you have to say, okay, can the for sale by owner get as many people to their product. It's the same thing. Right. You're talking now to it's a, a real marketing game. Like you said, it's a real marketing yeah. game. I'll give you the best person. I'll give you the best analogy ever. I'll go back to the car business. So I am a car slappy. Okay. You, you are? two really? know, you two Seriously? know that you two know that. And so I'm buying and selling cars probably, I don't know, monthly. It seems like, <laughs> but here's the thing, dude, I try to sell my cars on my own. Yeah. Pretty high end vehicles. True. Dude, I'm getting yeah. destroyed, destroyed. Yeah. I give it to my wholesaler to, to, to do their marketing stuff and they, and they send it to a Ferrari dealership or a Porsche dealership. Dude, they sell for a sexy premium. This yep. is the okay. same thing, you know? Yeah. So, no, I agree with that. Just having it on your own on one website, you're going to get three buyers. Having it everywhere, you're going to get 30 many. buyers, mm -hmm. you know? Same thing, you know? Yeah. So 
it's it it really comes down to a marketing exposure thing. It, it's the same argument of like, well, the car business is just the best. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. people, the buyer, the, the 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 consumer sentiment is also that. The problem here is this: people with average salaries are buying something that's worth ten times their salary. So you can't compare it to anything else. There's nothing you can compare it to. There's no nobody who's buying a boat that's uh, two hundred thousand uh, or three hundred or four hundred who is making thirty forty. Yeah. Nobody's buying planes, anything other than the real estate, because you can use great terms on the mortgage and have the bank finance it. That's something that you need because it's a shelter. Food, shelter, clothes, the shelter is the most expensive. Nothing you can compare to that. No car. When they buy a vehicle from a dealership versus some guy they met off. I think this is an awesome video. The internet, you cannot tell me that they're, they don't have a sense of worry about buying some car you know, that they met some dude off Facebook Marketplace versus going into the dealership and buying it from the dealer. Why? Because the consumer believes, and not only believes, it's the truth, that there's all kinds of compliance that that dealership has to go through in order to sell a vehicle. The days of selling lemons, like, dude, that's just gone. You don't know what you're going to get if you buy a car off some, you know, off the side of the street from Bob, you know, it's like, right. so, so the same thing happens in real estate because there's a code of ethics, because there's a process, because there's, there's legal ramifications that agents have to go through a professional standard of bringing these properties. Of course, there's a code of ethics, there's uh, there's disclosures, there's everything, but you don't have to find out things if you don't have to find out things, things. Mm-hmm. Like, do you have to find out if the property, uh, if this complex has uh, whatever percentage of a single entity owning the, the yes. properties. Mm-hmm. Do you have to? Do you have to find out what are going to be the taxes <laughs> next year? You you know what the taxes are this year. That's that's good enough. Mm-hmm. That's what I need to be. But going extra steps. That's what the. Um, I don't have yeah. to do as a listing agent for the buyer that I'm not representing. There is the whole thing of representing somebody. That it's there that's for a reason. Extra steps that you're that's there for a reason. Properties to the market. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing that gives consumers confidence in purchasing. You know, I'm thinking. I'm thinking as he's talking. I'm thinking, uh, what if the car, the taxi industry was the same as we two are right now? No way somebody's gonna get into somebody else's car and there's a ride with the strangers. There's no way. It's a murder scenario all the time. And boom, Uber is just dominating the market. And there were two cab company owners talking. There's no way. <laughs> you know, that would have been so- funny. <laughs> or like same thing with hotels and Airbnb. Come on, you're going to put a stranger in your bedroom? And there you go. <laughs> and then boom, big business. I don't know. A house through that channel versus dealing with every Tom, Dick, and Harry that's just trying to sell their house, you know, by themselves. And it, and it just leaves, and I know we kind of mentioned this, but it, it leaves so much because it's a transition phase. Like if and when, it sounds like more of a when, to be honest. Like when this potentially happens. Potentially. And it, it's in these transitions because right now it's if they do if we go through with this the whole process it becomes more efficient right and so mm-hmm. there there it, it, it makes the market more efficient and in that transition to efficiency there there's a gap for you to be able to position yourself to take advantage of that and take up market share you know it's like when you know you you went from I don't know having to go to car dealerships to see what the product was to now there's Carvana there's this that made it more efficient and those big players took advantage of that efficiency and, and took up market share. So with, as agents, like you have opportunity to... So as agents, I have my opinion. As agents, here's what I'm thinking. Those who have, uh, who are in the business, I think they should start doing more listings and focusing on getting listing. to know more property owners, tapping into the listing side more. If, for example, this change starts happening, you're already prepared. Number two, for those who are still working with buyers, and I think buyers is an amazing way to run the business because they also become sellers. I think what's going to happen with um, a buyer's agents is we need to start 
the buyer representation agreement. On the second or third page, it says that uh, the commission, we need to educate our clients that sometimes we're going to be paid zero, sometimes we're going to be paid two and a half percent, sometimes we're going to be paid two percent, one and a half percent. I think that we, or a lot of agents, are going to start saying that my fee is two and a half percent. I might be compensated By less. The Mm -hmm. There's a lot of chances that I will be covered on that percentage uh, or that fee from the listing side, from the seller. Um, but if I'm not, I'm expecting this much, just so you know. We need to, we need to start learning that language and educating our buyers. buyers. That, and then also learning how to position yourself and, and showing what we do for, for, for buyers. We need to communicate our value to the buyer. This is the things we need to do. And a lot of buyers, a lot of agents don't do that and a lot of buyers don't even know what to expect from an agent. So they will listen to it. And a lot of times we also spend a lot of time working with clients and then they change their mind too. Yep. And that's why the commission has been like, if you look at what you make per house, it seems like a lot of money. But then there's a lot of work that's going into... Sometimes a year of driving. <laughs> yeah, it's, sometimes it's a year or two working mm -hmm. with clients and at the end you get sometimes... Not something and sometimes nothing. Sometimes you get nothing, but sometimes it's, it could be easy and cause it could be like 10,000, mm -hmm. 15,000. People are like, oh my God, if they're selling that many homes, it's like millions. But it's really, it's really not as it seems. It's, there's a lot of things. So buyers agents need to learn how to first communicate to buyers how to, what their fee is and we, through the buyer representation agreement. I've been hearing that from my managing broker meetings. I've been saying that in our chat mm -hmm. that this is what's coming. We need to start learning about be it. Prepared. This is, be prepared. And second, we need to start leaning towards listings more, especially right now it's low inventory. We need more listings. Agents should be bringing more listings to the market. Thing is that, you know, lower interest rates, for the current mortgages, high interest rates today, switching from low mortgage rate to a high mortgage rate is, is expensive. That's why there's less sellers. But we need to always look for more sellers because a lot of them, they would be sellers, but I don't know yet. I don't know my options. If there was somebody who gave me those options, I might sell, but right now I'll re-rent or something like that, or I'll just stay. So work this field. <laughs> this was a good one. Uh, we heard one side, we gave our side, hope you enjoy it. If you are the buyer or the seller in the market, you probably agree with both sides. Um, give us some, some thoughts, you know, it would be nice to hear. Um, and, and maybe we do a follow-up video on, on that, you and know. And Homer is always here to help. Yeah, we're here to help and um, thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you so much.